Good morning, Degenerates, and welcome to another episode of Boring Crypto IO, the place where I read you the boring crypto news every morning, Monday through Friday, just so you don't have to. My name is Not Important, and I'm your host, LFG. Poll suggests Elizabeth Warren's anti crypto army strategy won't pay off. In case you don't know, Elizabeth Warren, that superhero of herself, has uh, started a new campaign slogan that is basically she's starting an anti crypto army. Not sure who's joining that. <laughs> I think the only people that care about bringing crypto down are the banks and Congress. Weird. Next. Crypto wallet provider Ledger raises $109 million as demand for self-custody soars. I chose this story, guys, because in case you don't know or you're new to the space, not your keys, not your crypto. I am a, a strong proponent for, for if you're not trading actively, get your crypto off the exchanges. I am a Ledger holder. Um, there are other hardware wallets out there um, that are, from what I hear, just as good, but I, I just I defaulted to Ledger. Not for any particular reason, just because I've heard about it forever and I've known about it. It's just where I went. So hopefully this will help you guys get a little bit of awareness on hardware wallets. And uh, if you don't know how to get your crypto off of exchange, hopefully this article will uh, give you a little bit of insight to that. Outside of that, Russia talks up prospects of BRICS countries developing new currency. Um, there's some really, really, uh, uh, I hate to use the word terrifying but concerning things going on in the financial world, not just the United States right now, um, with countries aligning uh, outside of the United States um, to use other currency besides the USD as the world reserve currency for commodities and trade. Um, the BRICS is basically an acronym for Brazil, Russia, India, China, and South Africa. Um, hopefully this article will give us some insight onto, the, into what that is in case you are unaware. And not only have they been developing this, um, uh, for, for a little bit of time, but as of late, it has hit the gas pedal hard and has accelerated and there's more and more countries joining this. Um, and as a United States, um, citizen, it's concerning. So last but not least. Australian Big Four Bank ANZ halts cash withdrawals from many branches. It's not looking good, guys. Uh, the 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 world um, economy, things going on in the world with money, um, it, it's 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 looking real weird. And hopefully, we can get some insight of what's going on. And and I don't know, man. I'm just reading the news. All right, let's look at the market right now. Market cap sitting at 1.168 trillion. Bitcoin dominance 46.2, ETH 18.5, and 24 GUE will get you an ETH transaction. Um, Bitcoin kind of going into a downtrend. We're going to look at that here in just a second. Uh, anything else crazy on the board I'm looking at? Um, XRP still still holding strong, man. We're going to look at XRP too. I've got I've got four four coins we're going to look at today. Um, these are all blue chip coins, nothing that you haven't heard about uh, before, but just to show you things that I'm looking at with these four um, that might help you. Um, yeah. But again, uh, I'm not seeing any any big pumps, any big dumps. Chainlink, 2% uh, up for the week. Uh, Stellar, right? Following up the coattails of, of XRP, there's a rumor, and I haven't done any research on it, so don't quote me on this, that that Stellar is going to be used as basically as like a mini test for for the for XRP ledger or, or a Ripple ledger, and that's why you you might see um, Stellar move alongside with XRP. Now I don't know how much I, I mean I'm really slaughtering what I read about that or heard about that, um, and I don't know how much um, truth there is to that, uh, but it is a rumor that I've heard that they're going hand in hand. Um, as XLM and Stellar, Stellar Lumens, whatever you want to call it, uh, is some kind of test for XRP before XRP goes ham. So we'll see what happens. HBAR, looking great. I missed that one. 8% on the 24 hour, 16 on the 7 day. Aptos down 10 for the week. 
Lido down 6.21 on the week. ARB down, well, that's whatever. Had a, had a decent pump yesterday. Uh, that's about it. Let's go ahead and go to the charts, guys. Bitcoin. All right. Bitcoin on the one hour. Again, we, this, this 28.9, again, you can call it 29, whatever you want. Crazy, crazy heavy resistance, guys. Um, I am hearing rumors of price suppression, um, manipulation to keep this price down. So big wigs, big players um, can can gain more. Um, what I am looking at, and these are these are a little rough, but it's all I'm kind of seeing besides just sideways movement personally. But I am. This is on, again. This is on the one hour. All right, sorry guys, I had a glitch there. So what I'm looking at, and this is this is this is really rough. Um, I am seeing a potential. Uh, let's make this yellow. I am seeing a potential head and shoulders pattern right here, guys. Which will probably, if this does play out, bring us down to around 27.3, 27, 27,000. Um, that is a really rough pattern. Don't don't take that um, as gospel right now. But here's where it's a little bit more interesting too. Again, these are both on the one hour. I'm also seeing another potential head and shoulders playing out right here, a smaller one, right? So shoulder, head, and shoulder. Um, and those are two very, very bearish patterns that will bring us down. Uh, a decent amount if they play out okay so again just things I'm looking at um, people that I'm, I'm I follow and I'm listening to are talking about uh, potentially again a turn down to that at 25 or just 25 26 level if we get a pullback um, and that's I mean I guess I'll have my buyers at 25 8 um, as well as I'm seeing someone call for a 20. <sighs> Look, anything is possible with Bitcoin. We'll go to the four hour two just to get a little bit clear. Anything is possible with Bitcoin. Um, do I think we're going to 20? Not necessarily, but is it possible? Absolutely. Um, on a bullish note, though, while I'm on the four hour before we move on to the next coin, this could be a possible inverse head and shoulders if this plays out okay which is bullish which could possibly send us to 30 so again it, these are just things to keep an eye on you know you if you've been following um, since the beginning you know when I talk about trades I talk about you're creating a story and whatever story has has the most information it's probably the story's gonna play out so you you've got to build it's not well it might go up it might go down it's it's which story has the most value right um, so it's just something to think about. All right, moving on. Ethereum. Ethereum. Ethereum's just holding strong right here around that 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 eighteen hundred dollar level. Um, Ethereum looks like nothing more than just a sideways movement right now, just just ranging. Um, before we do anything serious, we've got to break this eighteen thousand or eighteen hundred dollar level, turn it to support, and rock and roll. You could be setting. You could be looking at it for a potential bull flag right here. Um, but again. The guys, these are going to follow Bitcoin no matter what. No coin has pulled away from Bitcoin. No matter what anyone's telling you. Not yet, anyways. As much as I would love to see it. Um, everything is pretty much coupled with Bitcoin right now. So, if Bitcoin goes down, alt will bleed. Don't lie to yourself yet and think that ain't going to happen. But we could be setting up a potential uh, bull flag right here. This would be your measure move if we break out. Um for a possible possible six and a half percent um you probably like i said you probably get about 75 percent of that so roughly around gets to roughly around let's say 18.9 18.8 so keep an eye on that as well uh moving on to xrp xrp as well is um kind of setting up for another potential uh bull flag 
this is the four hour, uh, our last pennant or bull pennant or whatever you want to call it. Um, measure move, we blew way past it. Hit that 58 cent level and retraced, which is good. It's not bearish, it's healthy once something gets a run like that. Uh, again, the measure mood for this, I'll just go ahead and get rid of this black bolt delete, draw a new one. You would be looking at something kind of like this. If this ends up being a bull flag, potentially for 22%. All right, so that's what I'm looking at for those guys. Let's move on to Cardano, Ada. Ada, this is on the daily. Um, what I'm seeing is a possible giant inverse cup and handle or negate the cup and handle. We're in a uh, an ascending channel, which are bearish. Um, keep an eye on these trend lines, top and bottom. We've been bouncing and ranging inside of them. Let's straighten this guy up just a little bit too. So what's up? What do do? Something like that. So, so bottom of the channel, top of the channel, bottom of the channel, top of the channel, so on and so forth. Swing, swing, swing. Okay. Um, Usually it's about, I think it's, a, if I remember correctly, don't quote me, it's about 68% chance that it could break to the downside. Um, either way, eventually these should, could, the odds of them breaking down are, are stronger than them breaking uh, to the upside. As well as keep your eye on this 37 cent level. Um, if we flip uh, this level into support it, 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 and just continue to range here, this might negate this entire channel and this entire possible inverse uh cup and handle which would be bullish it's not bad at all i do have buyers right now for cardano at 33.51 um just letting you guys know what i do and as per usual guys this is not a trading channel um this is not financial advice i'm not a financial advisor i suck at trading don't pay attention to me don't listen to me i just let you guys know what i'm looking at and what i am doing outside of that let's get away from the trading stuff and let's get into the news because that's the whole point of this channel Poll suggests Elizabeth Warren's anti-crypto army strategy won't pay off. Um, I was talking with my woman about this, uh, and I find it interesting that there's so many uh, very vocal uh, people in Congress that are super anti-crypto. Now, mind you, these people are supposed to be in place because they are there because we voted them in, and they're supposed to be doing things that we're asking them to do and uh, be making moves with our best interest in mind. And being as heavy in the space as I am, I don't know anyone, and I don't think I'm in a, a um, God, what's it called, an echo chamber by any means. Um, I have plenty of people that don't know anything about crypto, uh, but I don't think I have anyone hitting up Congress and begging them to shut down crypto or attack crypto or to create an anti-crypto army, which is literally the word she used, and we'll get into that. So I find it really odd that there's these people in Congress that are so animate about taking down crypto. And it's like, um, who's asking you to do this? Because it sure as shit ain't the people that put you in your seat. Banks. Probably banks. Other people with lots of cash on the hand that, that don't want their shitty ass Ponzi scheme to fall apart. All right, that's enough opinion. Let's get on the story. Elizabeth Warren has long been a crypto critic and appears to be making it a focus as her re-election bid kicks off. Here it comes. Oh man, this is close. this is so ridiculous. This chick is out of her mind. United States Senator Elizabeth Warren of Massachusetts is making her anti-crypto agenda one of the centerpieces of her re-election campaign, despite polls suggesting the majority of Americans think crypto is a key to innovation for the future. Exactly. That that sorry guys, that paragraph explains it all. In a March 30th tweet, Warren suggests she was fighting to put government on the side of working families. No, she's not. And prominently quoted a political headline that says, Elizabeth Warren is building an anti-crypto army. And here's her tweet. Look at this. Look at this nonsense. Look at this. This is, I cannot stand politicians, guys. I understand we need a government, things like that. I'm not, I'm not like, I, I am not a, um, uh, 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 
God, what's the word? Uh, anarchy person or anything like that. Like, I, I, I believe that we need a government. But, but these people don't give a shit about us at all. All they care about is keeping their position and making money off of us. And it's so hilarious. Like, look at this. This is, it's so cringy. All right, so I'm in this fight to put our government on the side of working families. Join our re-election campaign today. Elizabeth Warren is building an anti-crypto army. Bullshit. If you're here for the working families, maybe teach them how to make money in crypto. You're doing everything you can to keep us out of it, to not allow us to trade certain tokens and things like that that we want. It's so cringy. Uh, the pro crypto army took on uh, took Twitter to lambaste the senator. Really, which is funny too because let, let's get real. Uh, Twitter is the pulse of crypto. I don't care what anyone tells you. If you want to know what's going on in crypto, Twitter is what it, where it's at. And the fact that she wants to post this shit on Twitter and expect to not get the most backlash she's ever seen in her life shows she's so out of touch with what's going on. <laughs> the pro crypto army took to that. Took to Twitter to lambaste the senator. Popular YouTuber uh, Coin Bureau ridiculed the strategy, saying, "Imagine thinking that building a quote-unquote anti-crypto army is going to win you votes." While crypto advocate Lord TJ wrote that Warren's stance would push innovation offshore. Absolutely, maybe that's her goal. Uh, maybe she's being paid off by China. I don't know, man. I don't trust none of these people. Live feed of Senator Warren spinning her anti-crypto army campaign banner. <laughs> While the senator undoubtedly has access to her own private polling on the issues, recent polls commissioned by the industry suggest the stance will not be a vote winner among the majority of the population. In a February 24th survey commissioned by crypto exchange Coinbase, a whopping 76% of the representative sample believed that cryptocurrency and blockchain are the future. A survey commissioned by the digital asset manager firm Grayscale Investments in November shared similar sentiment, with the responses interestingly suggesting that 59% of Democrats consider crypto to be the future of finance. That's more than the 51% of Republicans who said the same thing. However, in Warren's favor, the crisis of 2022, such as the collapse of BlockFi, FTX, and Terra Luna, have weighed heavily on crypto sentiment among the public. With a recent survey from Morning Consult finding that trust in crypto had plummeted over the course of the year. It does every time we go into a bear market, y'all. Uh, the phrase Elizabeth Warren is building an anti-crypto army was first featured in a February 14th Politico article, which claimed she was starting to recruit conservative Senate Republicans to her anti-crypto cause and getting some early positive vibes from bank lobbyists. You effing think. So the people that are for it are more government officials and banks. But wait, wait, wait. I'm in this fight to put our government on the side of working families. On the side of working families. Senate Republicans and bank lobbyists. Working families no, you're a liar. You're full of shit. The senator appears to have taken a liking to the phrase, however, considering she has prominently featured it in her re-election campaign. Warren has long been vocal critic of crypto, even arguing that it would ruin the economy. No, not if you're in it. <laughs> you know what's going on. You're such a fool. You have no idea. You know nothing about it. Uh, in a Wall Street Journal opt published soon after the collapse of crypto exchange FTX. On February 14th, Warren vowed to reintroduce an anti-money laundering bill she had previously pushed, which would extend to decentralized finance and decentralized autonomous organizations, while also requiring unhosted wallets, miners, and validators to implement AML policies. Kick rocks, woman. You just want to you want the old regime to stay in place. You're afraid to lose your seat. That is all it is. Sorry, I know I sound like the bleeding heart libertarian right now but I, I i i can't stand these people i really can't they they go under the guise of we're trying to help the the, the smaller person the the working class family it's bullshit when you're making four hundred thousand dollars a year sitting in a chair that no term limits you continue to get voted in because you're rubbing shoulders with all the people with the money um 
and you continue to actually keep us from making money? Why don't you educate people in crypto? Why don't you show them the ins and outs? Why don't you show them how to onboard and offboard? Why don't you show them how to protect their assets? Why don't you show them how to, oh, I don't know, do some research on companies? But no, no, you're going to anti-crypto army. She just wants to keep you in your nine to five, keeping you broke, being a slave to their system. I know that sounds super, super conspiracy theorist, but think about it. So she can continue making $400,000 a year plus with all whatever back end deals they're making. It's a scam, y'all. It's a scam. All right. Crypto wallet provider Ledger raises $109 million as demand for self-custody source. The funding is the first of three rounds of hardware wallet providers whose success has been fueled by growing awareness of crypto self-custody. 100%, guys. Not your keys. Not your crypto. Hardware wallet provider Ledger has raised 100 million, 100 million euros, excuse me, which was 109 million in USD, in a series of C funding round extensions, placing its valuation at 1.3 billion euros, 100 or 1.4 billion in US, in line with its previous funding in June of 2021. Bloomberg reported on March 30th. The funding in this first of three investment rounds. According to the report, a second closing is due in April, followed by a third funding to take place at a later date. Given high investor interest, the capital will be used to expand the company's distribution network, increase production, and develop new products. Ledger's new investors include Vayner Fund. Was that? Was that Gary? Mr. Gary V? Uh, seat. I, I'm not even trying to read that. True Global Ventures and Digital Finance Group. Previous investors include Morgan Creek, Cathay Innovation, Innovation, Drapper Dragon, and Caphorn, among others. Um, yeah, that's cool. Get ledgers out there, man. Make people more aware of what it is. Um, before I finish this article, too, uh, side note. If you do decide to use Ledger as a hardware wallet, um, buy directly from the site. Do not buy it from a third party. I know that sounds super, super like kicking at a dead horse, but people continue to do this. Here's the thing. If you buy from a third party or Amazon or whatever, it's you run the risk of someone buying a ledger from ledger, opening it up, copying the, the API keys, hacking it basically, repackaging it and reselling it. So when you buy it and you put your crypto on it, they're going to take your crypto. They know exactly how to do it. So... The easiest way to, to keep that from happening, the safest way to keep it from ha happening is less hands it travels through, the better. So order it from actual Ledger site. And I think they're in France. So it's gonna look a little wonky if you're here in the States. Um, but that's the best way to do it. Don't buy it from a third party seller. Um, in a recent interview with Cointelegraph at Paris Blockchain Week, Ledger CEO Pascal Gauthier, Gauthier noted that the collapse of crypto exchanges and banks in recent months has raised the level of awareness about crypto self-custody. Whenever the market gets stressed and whenever people fear their savings, uh, fear for their savings, you know they rush to crypto and to Ledger. Ledger reportedly had its best month of sales in November following the dramatic collapse of the crypto exchange FTX. According to the company, revenue from Ledger Live's buy and sell crypto app has grown 200% in the past 12 months. Hardware wallet provider Trezo also benefited from FTX failure, reporting a 300% surge in sales revenue as a result of investors uh, rescuing their funds. Ledger claims to store more than 20% of crypto assets in circulation and 30% of the non-fungible token supply. Among recent moves, the company hired Tony Fidel, Fidel, a builder of the iPhone, to design a new version of its hardware wallet. Ooh, and it is sexy as hell. It basically looks like a mini iPhone, touch screen. And I'm not really like a, a, a flashy gadget gadget guy, I gotta have the latest, but it looks really cool. And just the way it looks, it makes me want it really bad. Anyway, prominent figure in the industry, uh, figures in the industry have also encouraged crypto self custody. Self custody is a fundamental human right. You are free to do it anytime, just make sure you do it right. Finance CEO CZ said in November advising investors to start small and learn the technology. It is a little bit clunky and cumbersome to get your your tokens off of the exchanges. Um, so 
make sure you do your research and, and learn how to do it correctly. Um, but it is, it's a, it's a little clunky and, and if you don't do it correctly and you mess up a code here or a letter there, you could lose stuff. Um, a good rule of thumb is that when you are getting ready to send your stuff over, et cetera, et cetera, uh, do a test send, like like a dollar or two. Like let's say you're sending XRP, only send like a dollar worth of XRP over to your, your wallet. Once it, you receive it um, and the transaction is complete, just rinse and repeat um, just to be safe. Um, side note though to that though is because it's still super super cumbersome and and clunky because crypto is it's kind of like a a safe place to think that well you are still early whoever makes this and i think coinbase will probably be the first person uh, first place to, to finally get this whoever makes gaining crypto as easy as putting in a, a, a credit card and buying something and vice versa they're gonna win in this crypto game when you make it super simple for for the vanilla user and by vanilla i mean just just the, the plain user not the guy who's deep or the girl who's deep into crypto you know knows hash codes etc cetera, etc cetera, has been swapping and trading uh for years but when you make it for the average daily person that just just wants to buy they're not trading and then sell uh very simply whoever cracks that code and makes onboarding and offboarding as simple as cash basically they're gonna they're gonna break open and win this game um and at that point now it's too late so the point of I me mean, that long-winded explanation is that it, it gives you a little peace of mind that you know we're still we're still decently early into this crypto game all right, Russia talks up prospects of BRICS countries developing new currency. Like I said in the beginning of this video, BRICS is this alliance of Brazil, Russia, India, China, and South Africa, as well as other countries now that are finding ways to trade outside of using the USD as the world reserve currency. Uh, it, it, it's interesting stuff, guys. Uh, a top Russian official has reportedly claimed that the countries of the BRICS alliance, like I said, Brazil, Russia, India, China, and South Africa, are working on creating their own currency. Not surprised. New World Order could be emerging as economic powerhouses increase their efforts to distance themselves from the U.S. dollar hedge money. Uh, according to reports, a top Russian official has claimed that the BRICS alliance is working on creating its own currency. BRICS is an acronym for five leading emerging economies, Brazil, Russia, India, China, and South Africa. State Duma Deputy Chairman Alexander Babakov made the comments uh, at the St. Petersburg International Economic Forum event in New Delhi, India, according to local reports. Babakov reportedly stressed the importance of both nations working towards a new medium for payments, adding that digital payments could be the most promising and viable. He also said the currency could benefit China and other BRICS members and not the West. Uh, its composition should be based on inducting new monetary ties established on a strategy that does not defend the U.S.'s dollar or euro, but rather forms a new currency competent of benefiting our shared objectives. Babakov also reported, reported that Babakov also reportedly postulated that the new currency would be secured by gold and other commodities such as rare earth elements. Back to a gold standard, guys. It's not a bad idea. Uh, this week, former Goldman Sachs chief economist Jim O'Neill called on the BRICS block to expand and challenge the dominance of the dollar. In a paper published in the Global Policy Journal, he wrote that the U.S. dollar plays a far too dominant role in global finance. BRICS currency is not a new concept. In 2019, Cointelegraph reported that members of the block were discussing the creation of new digital currency for a unified payment system. In a related development this week, China and Brazil reached a deal to trade in their own currencies. Uh, the move will remove the U.S. dollar as it, the intermediary, further empowering both nations to distance themselves from world reserve currency. According to reports, the uh, agreement will enable China and the biggest economy in Latin America, Brazil, uh, to conduct trade financial transactions directly. Chinese, Chinese yuan, yuan, yen? one their dollar 
will be exchanged directly from Brazil, uh, real and vice versa, uh, instead of going through the greenback. Um, China is racing ahead with its central bank digital currency project and crypto adoption in Brazil is growing following the legalization of its own payment method in the country late last year. Meanwhile, Uncle Sam remains determined to continue its war on crypto. Way to go, Elizabeth Warren. You're a winner. As financial regulators tighten the screws uh, on the embryonic industry. This is it, guys. The U.S. is is losing this this race. Um, as well as there's there's some back end to this too. Uh, the United States here we'll just say it this way if you pay attention to the financial game in the united states you know that the u.s has been actively choosing to devalue its own currency for quite some time and have been doing it at a a extraordinarily fast rate in the last few years that being said if you're a country and you trade your commodities your your hard goods your oil your gold your crops your grain whatever it is that's coming out of your country um for years and years you've been trading that for dollars because dollars are what make the world go round um as the world reserve currency on top of that you've been bullying other countries basically you know if you don't do whatever, you know, whatever policy we want, or if you act a certain way or do whatever, um, we're going to cut you out of trade. We're going to basically shut you off from the rest of the world um, and buy from other places, et cetera, et cetera. So the, the twofold um, issues with that is, first of all, you're giving us your dog shit. If I'm another country, you're giving us your dog shit uh, for our stuff that's actually worth something. And we don't want your dog shit anymore because... You can take all of our oil, which is actually worth something. You can take all of our gold, which is actually worth something. You can take all of our our exports that are actually worth something, that actually hold value, and you're basically giving us your crap devalued paper money that at any point in time, you just print more. So why would I want your crap? I'm going to go over here to some place that's going to back their money, buy an actual uh, gold or some other real commodity, some other hard asset, um, and I'm going to make an alliance with them. I'm over the dollar. As well as, on top of that, you're going to bully me around. So if I don't want your dollar, you're going to kick me out of all this, these trade agreements. So I can't trade with anyone else. You have all these sanctions on me, etc., etc. Well, that only worked for so long. And now the countries that have been sanctioned by the United States are like, kick rocks. We're going to create our own alliance. And a lot of people are on board. So basically, as much as I love my country, the people running this damn thing have been playing like the big kid in the sandbox for way too long, and other countries are over it, which isn't surprising. So let's see what this looks like in the next few years. All right, guys, last but not least, Australian Big Four Bank ANZ halts cash withdrawals from many branches. Not good, guys. I don't know. I, I hate to say that the entire banking system is going to fall apart, but like I told you uh, a week or two ago, um, me and my lady took a good... We still have money in the bank, but but the bare minimum. We took a good portion of our cash out because we don't want to deal with this shit. The move comes as Australians continue to reduce their usage of cash at bank branches, but has sparked fears that the death of cash is near. Uh, ANZ, one of Australia's big four banks, will cease facilitating withdrawals and deposits from a and deposits. Interesting, from a number of its Australian branches as it looks to push its customers toward using an ever dwindling number of ATMs and deposit machines. The decision has received pushback with critics such as uh, Patricia Sparrow, CEO of the Council um, on the Aging, the Aging, uh, telling the Australian that the change could disproportionately affect older people who are less capable of going digital. Others suggested it, suggested it would make fiat users more susceptible to technical issues. The move has also renewed fears of a push to eliminate cash and that cash could soon be replaced by a central bank digital currency. It's interesting to watch the entire world move in this direction all at the same time. Almost like it's orchestrated. 
In response to questions from Cointelegraph, an ANZ spokesperson said that the affected branches are all metropolitan branches that have ATMs and deposit machines nearby, and that the move was partially prompted by in-branch transactions decreasing by more than 50% over the past four years. I'm not sure I, I believe that. The development comes as Australian gradually Australian Australia gradually transitions to a cashless society, with the percentage of retail payments made with cash falling from 59% to two, in 2007 uh, to just 27% in 2019, according to a March 16 bulletin from the Reserve Bank of Australia (RBA). The RBA noted that the results from its 2022 survey will be available late later this year, uh, but added that COVID-19 pandemic had only accelerated the trend with businesses also contributing to the shift. Furthermore, a substantial share of merchants indicated plans to discourage cash payments at some point in the future. The RBA also pointed to a reduction in ATMs and bank branches around the nation with the number of bank branches falling by 30% since 2017, while ATM numbers fell by 25% in 2016. One of the major concerns with CBDCs replacing cash is how they might affect individual freedom and privacy. Exactly. Uh, as cash transactions offer an anonymity, the ability to make transactions without leaving a record. CBDC pilot program is currently underway in Australia with an update expected around the middle of 2023. And one of the ramifications identified by the RBA was that it could displace the cash Australian dollar. In an email response to questions from Cointelegraph, a spokesperson for another of the big four banks, NAB allied these fears somewhat saying, NAB still handles cash at our branches and we have no plans to change. Cash will continue to play an important part in Australian society for as long as our customers want it to. Bullshit. Uh, the other two banks in the big four, CBA and Westpac, did not respond to questions from Cointelegraph by the time of publication. But Westpac told the Australian told the Australian that it, I guess that's a, a news article, so I keep messing up, told the Australian that it also had no plans to wind back access uh, to cash through its branches. A CBA spokesperson was slightly more ambiguous in their response, however. CBDCs are coming, guys. I've been saying it since I started this channel. All right, let's get you guys out of here. Bitcoin still hovering under that, still hovering under that 2798 level. Keep an eye on those head and shoulders patterns that I showed you. Outside of that, guys, it is Friday. Go out, enjoy your weekend. Go touch some grass. Get away from the charts for a little bit if you've been staring at them for too long. Um, but besides that, if you do enjoy the content I provide here on Boring Crypto IO, please, by all means, subscribe to the channel. Turn on your little bell over here for notifications so you know when I do post a video. Watch, like, and share the videos if you like them, guys. And I'll see you bright and early Monday morning. I'm out of here.